Welcome everybody to another surf report at your regularly scheduled time. I'm recording this in oh, quite a bit of snow, northwest Arkansas. Seeing, I think, about a foot of snow, if I'm not mistaken. Some people reporting that doesn't doesn't seem like the regular old snow we're used to. I have a couple of announcements before we get started, and you're going to start to see some oh, some new things as I messed around here. You can see me over here now. I'm the surfer guy. I thought it'd be kind of funny to put my face over here as I watch the snowplow go by. Um, the DreamBot. Thank you guys for being concerned about where's the daily DreamBot. And um, yeah, I really got busy. It's no cop out. Super busy. And so I've been very lax in the daily dream bots. I hope to, you know, I hope to fix that. Um, I hope to, to be a regular thing. If you have comments about where that dream bot should go right now, it's in the, you know, like the bowels of the forum at the national dream center. A lot of people don't like that. I'm not the bi biggest fan of my BB and forum outlets and everything. So maybe if it should go on telegram, that's cool. If it should go on a post on YouTube, I'm cool with that. If you if you have an idea, please let me know. If you just want it at back at the National Dream Center, I'm good with that too. But um, my heart goes out to all the Texans. Um, we have family down there, um, some clients down in Texas, all of them having similar problems. And just um, stay safe. Hope uh, you know uh, my positive energy for. Warmth, first of all, safety, and just a sense of getting back to normalcy. I don't. I think there's just something absolutely abnormal about what's happening down there. And then, I don't know, probably the biggest news, as I'm just coming on to record the the surf report, is R.I.P. to Rush Limbaugh. Kind of a surprising. Um, passing through and this really is a segue i don't mean light of this but it was a very interesting connection to today's surf report because the overall energies and you know what i forgot to get my cursor out hold on gotta get this out all right so we've got a cursor thanks for your patience Passing through is our main energy this week. This report goes from the 18th of February to the 24th. We go from Thursday to Wednesday. And um, so like midweek to midweek, it covers the weekends. What are we doing? Two things. We're looking for the biggest influence and we do triangulation. As you can see, there's circles here that are overlapping each other. We go for the very center. So we want the main influence. What is the what is the biggest energy you're going to feel this week? And that whatever energy has, has it having to do with like passing through. And there's a lot of different ways to look at this, but this sort of sense of, I don't want to say futility, but this sense of sort of a Pisces feel sort of a spiritual transcendent sort of feel. If you get too extreme in it, it sort of feels like pointlessness and it's just, just kind of like vagabond through this life. It's sort of, sort of a existential feeling. Then there's this sense, if you, especially if you come into the collective unconscious where, where we do the dream bot, um, there's this sense of, well, life, ending of life, that, that, that hits home. So I did the dream bot earlier this morning and that was before we heard about um, Rush Limbaugh. So that's that's crazy. You'll be you'll be surprised what the main word is in the dream bot, though. It's not what you think. Um, but then we also have this visiting theme in the dream bot. And so there's this just sort of this, hey, I'm, I'm not from here. I'm just kind of passing through. And this could be a life sort of a feeling and an existential sort of transcendence, just passing through. I'm not really attached to anything here, you know, sort of like the Buddhist mind mindset. Or it could be the transient nature of life in a cyclic sense, in, a, in cycles. And we do have that in the astrology. By the way, we're going to be doing day-by-day -day astrology. So that's the first thing is the influence. Second thing, later on in the video, the most important part, in my opinion, is the solution. How should we behave to maximize the energies afforded to us? We'll talk about the um, I Ching. I'm not a big fan of the title of it, but it is what it is. Gentle penetration. 
And um, it's more about to do with the air and the wind flowing through like a forest and how thorough it is, but it's very gentle and it, and it covers all the space. There's no, you know, it just goes around the trees and everything. It, uh, the wind doesn't seem to be too affected by the, just the little trunks of the trees. But anyway, that's the general sense. It's just kind of passing through. That's kind of the overall energy. And with that, we're going to start with the collective unconscious first. So hang on. Okay, here's the collective unconscious. These are people's dreams at a collective level all around the world. The dream bot goes out and looks. And here's what we picked up um, as of 24 hours from this morning. To top word, number one word in the dreams, murder. Yeesh. I'm not suggesting that Rush Limbaugh was murdered, but you got to wonder if the dream bot's doing that the biggest news right now probably the rush limbaugh story so maybe hmm maybe i'm not ruling that out but if you look at the overall context of the red arrows it all points to like the ending of life um death and in sort of a an, an attack sort of a way i'm not suggesting that's connected to rush limbaugh i you know we i don't we may never know but um, the other meme here is travel and visit. And this is the direct overlap to all the other modalities that we're going to talk about. It's just travel and visiting and wanting, discovering, and we're in a curious state. We're not really from here. We're just visitors, you know, we're just passing through. So that's the uh, blue arrows. And that's important because where mind is, even if it's a collective mind, body follows. So we're creating our reality through, this is the lens through which we will know what kind of reality the collective is making. So that's why we like the dream bot. All right, here's our overview. We've got these uh, football vertical lines here, the end zone, I guess, in this window is where, where our week is in February. And in it, the highlights are that Mercury goes station and, and uh, direct middle to earlier part of the week. We're going to talk about that and this nice, oh my gosh, this really subtle, it's going to be subtle, uh, but it's going to be a nice, fresh air of not, not, not massive change or anything. It's going to be more power, power to power, but in an earthy feel, as you come down into the physical reality this week, you're going to have this sense of power and not know really where it is. So it's a really, it's a fresh change to all those reds and squares that we are, are so familiar with in the past few weeks. You're going to have a few more days of a lot of squares, tension, you know, but it's, it, it's like it's overdue. It's due to start aging out. You're going to see throughout this week, as soon as we start drilling down day by day, you're going to see that it's, it's decaying off. And the biggest one that's left over is this Mars trine Pluto. It's really, really, I think it's going to be, Pretty cool. It goes exact at the end of our week. And then, of course, um, early um, after the end of this surf report, the next couple days, then we're working towards another full moon. This was going to be a Virgo full moon. We're not going to talk at length about it, but this week is related to that full moon. So let's get started. Thursday, the 18th, this is uh, tomorrow for those of you, the, the hundreds of you that are going to see this video on Wednesday afternoon, the 17th, on the 18th, you're going to wake up to the sun in Pisces. And that's going to be a whole different feel. It's, um, it might be jumping into the ocean, but a lot of, because it's water, Pisces water, and they're the fish. But I think, um, I think a lot of you are going to feel even more transcendent from where you were. Like, you know, the, the there's kind of an irony here because sun in Aquarius is real distant and sort of um, airy, uh, but but dull. The sun is dulled because it's in detriment in Aquarius. When you jump into Pisces, sun comes alive, but you're sort of doused in spirituality, 
transcendence, there's the irony because Aquarius thinks they're transcendent because they're out here, but the Pisces really are connected to the all that is, even the ones who think that they're all alone. And they're the ones who are most connected to others at a more of a collective level. And so you might get telepathy, you might get mysticism, you might get some precognitive dreams, especially as we roll right over. So tonight, Wednesday night, um, to pay attention to those dreams. They might be very mystical as this as the sun is making its trans uh, its uh, transition over to Pisces. And we already know that Neptune, let me let me darken this so you can see it better. We already know that Neptune is there. Neptune, we haven't really talked about a whole lot, except last week we had that real nice, quiet opportunity with Mars. And when everything was all conflicted and tension, if you can't do anything else, remember, we were going to take your yang and, uh, and just go into your dreams. Just let yourself wander, illusions, fantasy, let your imagination go wild. Well, now it's going to be even easier with the sun going into Pisces as well. Now, where do we go from here? There's a lot here that's going to stay the rest of the week. This is the last few days of the tension. That's the 90 degrees. Those are called squares in the in the red. Those produce lots of tension, lots of conflict potentially, but it's basically in 90 degrees from planet to planet, and the energy has a hard time uh, going through to the other planet. And so they're they're sort of isolated. They're in tension. But these are the last few days of it. And the only one that remains, mark my words, it's going to be Uranus, Square, Saturn. And later on this, this year, Saturn, I think in um, I think May or June, don't quote me on that, but Saturn's going to go in retrograde. And it's going to keep this square going. It's going to keep the square alive. And so... We're going to be talking about that extensively. It's a it's a big it's a big energy that's going to affect us for the whole year of 2022 and possibly I'm sorry 2021 and beyond. Um, let's see here. Then the nice oh we're going to talk about this later. But the Mars trine Pluto. I just want to point that out that it's already here. It's already starting. Mars at 22. Pluto at 25, you can see they're both in Earth signs. That's important. Black Moon Lilith, always like to see where you have an opportunity to be heard and have your voice, your uniqueness. And um, so it's, it's also in Taurus. A lot of Taurus planets. Remember, we had a lot of Aquarius planets, a lot of air. We, we're going to be talking about that um, on the next day. I think we're ready for that. On Friday the 19th, what do you think is going to happen at SCOTUS? Apparently there are three cases that are going to be heard. And um, do you think they're going to be heard in one day? think they're going to be just thrown out? Possibly. I'm not expecting anything to be out of that. But, you know, I'm not completely down on life and negative about the outcomes of these things, but I just know how rigged everything is, and I'm, I guess I'm more of a realist than anything. Speaking of realism, or not, look at how many air sign, uh, air planets we have, including the North Node. There's six of them, so there's six air, but there's also five um, Earth, and there was more when the moon was there, so there's... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And if you put include the part of fortune, there's six too. So there's a lot of earth, a lot of air. And not that I mean too much of that, but they're kind of running in opposites where the earths are having you completely here in the 3D reality. That's the passing through part. When you connect earth and air, you get a sense of you're just passing through. The, the distance is coming from the the air. The air is, I'm not really part of your stupid world. I'm not part of your suffering. I don't sense what you guys sense. I don't succumb to the emotions. And then, of course, the earths 
are nice and grounded um and they generally are uh, you know a lot more well practical and I would say the rational side is the air side. But anyway, you put those together and you get this sense of, well, curiosity, it's the air. And then I want to visit. So you get this travel effect, travel, visiting, just visiting, just passing through. So it's definitely there at a grander scale. Now we're almost there to the most important, in my opinion, the most important thing in the sky. Well, it's probably these squares, but they're dying out. That's the point. And what you're going to be left with is Mars, Trine, Pluto. Now I want to talk a little bit about that because this is really interesting how both Mars and Pluto are home to the same sign. What sign is that? Trivia question. What sign is, uh, is ruled by both of these? Well, the answer is here. Scorpio. And they're both power. They, we've talked about this before. Remember when Mars was square to Pluto? It was the, we were disconnected from ourselves. Now we're connected. Now we've got our outer power. Now granted, the outer power is in detriment in Taurus. So a little bit weakened. That's your outer yang, physical, behavioral. Now Pluto is the inner power, the deep, subconscious. Don't know where it comes from kind of a thing. When Carl Jung talked about fate, and all that he's talking, the archetype of Pluto is uh, not, not quite destiny. That's more of like the North Node and Dharma. But Pluto is that unseen power, the hidden hand out of nowhere. It had, was a miracle. That's Pluto. That's the Pluto energy. Came from almost nowhere. So now those are connected in a nice earth trine. And with a trine, the energy is nice and easy. Together, the outer energy, the outer yang meets the inner power. It's beautiful. And, the you know, the Mars isn't too, the Mars is grounded. It's not too impulsive right now. It's a, it's a really beautiful grounded power. All right. And the other thing we want to talk about on the 20th, this is, um, what day? Saturday. The moon is over the north node. And the North Node is, yeah, it's, it's sort of the, it's your future, sort of your life purpose, but more of the, the Dharma. What are you here for? Not karma, not what you signed up for. That would be more of the South Node, but the North Node is your vector forward. And the neat thing here is you've got a trine with this, a trine over to Jupiter. And so emotions are going to show you your path. And you've got the help of Jupiter, Jupiter's wisdom to give you insight, to give the emotion. Remember, it's the emotion. So you're going to have to feel your way through, which is kind of weird in Gemini. Gemini is not all about feelings. It's about mind and thinking and even logic. So you're going to have to pause the rational mind just a while to feel. And it's going to be, you know, you're going to have a tendency to try to rationalize it. Try not to do that. Don't rationalize it. Feel your way through to your Dharma's path on Saturday. Then on the 21st, this is where Mercury goes stationed direct. You can, okay, so I probably should. Uh, Mercury station and direct. Um, I don't know if all of you feel these changes in Mercury. I know it's this big to do in the mainstream media even now that's fine i don't know i'm not poo-pooing it but it's not the whole complete thing i mean every time something bad happens oh it's mercury retrograde i'm not sure it's that powerful we've got so much else going on here in the sky but nonetheless it is an influence and in Mar and mercury in aquarius now it's start to move forward short-term travel is going to start to um, start to take place finally. Incidentally, Sunday is where I think it's starting to get more like 40 to 50 degrees here. So I would imagine if there's snow still left, it's probably going to start melting pretty fast and short-term travel will start to commence. Then your thoughts are in there too. Communication is much more present, not real present with Aquarius, but more, more present and future oriented. That's where Aquarius is 
And um, so that's enough for Mercury. There is still a square there, but you can see they're segmented. That means that energy is starting to die out. Now, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about with Mars and Pluto, uh, which I think this is going to be a beautiful energy for all of you, if you can tap into it, is this grounding power. It's a grounded power like a grounding rod. You know, you don't have, I guess you could successfully have good, you know, energy in your house, but it's unsafe. It, and you can really get hurt without that grounding. I guess supposedly even with a grounding rod, you can get hurt, duh. But so if you touch the grounding rod, but, but in this one, it makes it a lot safer, but there's the electrons, proton, there's uh, there's energy that passes much easier when one side is grounded. Even like a Faraday cage. In a Faraday cage, it's the metal structure around you, like a web around you, that prevents all these frequencies from coming in. It protects you. That Basically, there's no frequencies. But it's almost useless. It doesn't even work if there's no grounding in there. So grounding re really um, lights up the most of the components that are designed and in existence, okay? So this is a grounded power because both of them are in earth signs. That's the grounded part is the real specialty of the earth signs. Now we get into Monday, the 22nd. We have a an opportunity developing. This is the sun now, the Pisces sun. is He's now used to being in, in Pisces and the transcendental stages and the mysticism and the and the dreaminess of it. But there's a nice opportunity with Uranus. Uranus is eccentric, change-oriented, but also very insightful, maybe inventions. Your soul, if you're connected to the superconscious, if you will, which is below the subconscious, you have an opportunity to get insights to really affect change. This is a world-changing dynamic here. If you're tapped in, you got to be tapped in, though. <clears throat> and also, seeing it the other way, if changes come in, that's Uranus, changes, there's an opportunity for ego to get more spiritual, to improve self, to get more connected with the rest of society <clears throat> and others. Let's see here. What else? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tuesday is the 23rd of February, and we still have <clears throat> two squares remaining. It's uh, Mars and Venus. Those are two degrees off, so they still got a ways to go, and they move roughly the same, same speed, Venus being faster. And uh, we have Uranus square Saturn. That's the one that ain't going away. That'll be the last one remaining. Um, we also have this, the sun sextile Uranus. And by the way, especially with Black Moon Lilith there, there's another way to look at this opportunity. You know, if, uh, if, if the sun, the identity, the ego, if he feels too or she feels too out there or... or out in fantasy world, which is what Pisces can be, then Uranus can have a, a way of slapping you back into reality because Uranus is in a earth sign. It's grounded. It's a grounded change. So it's if anything, anytime a change comes in from Uranus, you're going to feel you're going to have to come back into this reality. It's like a face full of reality. Then Wednesday, Welcome back to another T-square. Don't worry, it's just the moon. It swips around there pretty quick. As she is headed to a Virgo full moon, that's that. Um, take a snapshot of this full moon because the solution, when we get into the solution and the behaviors, they're going to be all about what you'd expect from a Virgo full moon. Well, maybe not all of it, but it's very similar. So take a snapshot of that. That'll be important. And then this Black Moon Lilith and Uranus are the trap. This is the trap today. It's uh, it's all about, I don't know, 
just um, change and insight, maybe too much of them, maybe uh, wanting to speak in volumes and bigger. And that's the Black Moon Lilith is wants to be heard and yearns that voice. And no one knows what you really want until you say it. That's the sort of thing that that Black Moon Lilith, the gift that she offers. She's the fire lady, but we don't know really what she wants until she speaks. And so yearning for that could be the trap. Yearning for change could be the trap. Generally speaking, when you have a T-square when you and you have two 90-degree angles and you get caught in this trap, the answer is to go to the opposite side of the zodiac and voila, guess what you have? You have the part of fortune in Scorpio, which what? It reminds you of the two owners or the two uh, planets that are home to Scorpio, Pluto and Mars, and they are in that trine. So it's all together. It's that Scorpio energy can be your solution, which is to realize your power, realize your inner power through your passions. Um, right, all the all the people walking today. It's great. It's awesome, but it's cold out there. All right. The I Ching says, 57, we only have one change line. It's wind over wind. You see, gentle penetration is that there's nothing that stops it. You know, wind over wind, it's just wind. And and it's gentle. That's the key here. So that's nice. Um, subtle penetrating effect is like a soft wind blowing through reeds that are bending gracefully, demonstrating flexibility and endurance. This symbolizes a quiet, relaxed effectiveness in action. Small forces can add up to produce lasting results. Great. Wonderful. Gentle penetration bodes well for new relationships or enterprises. Gentle beginning can lead to a long-lasting union for those of you who are seeking. Well, this is a good time for that. And we'll get that get to that when we get into the solution. So hang on. Now we need to cover line five. There's line five. Remember, it starts from the bottom up. One, two. This is the Chinese I Ching hexagrams. And the change line is at five. So we go line five. The fifth place indicates a situation in which things are far from perfect and a new direction needs to be taken. Gee, do you think? Things are far from perfect. Wow. Couldn't have been more right. Don't throw out the good with the bad. So don't throw out all of reality just because parts of it or even the biggest part of it is bad. Continue making changes and adjustments until the situation is aligned with your true purpose. Um, it's not really a don't give up message, but it is a definitely still with that passing through in time, this will change, keep on changing, but you don't have to take big steps you don't have to jump too far it's just make your little change and just keep going all right now let's get into the solution but first a word from the sponsor go with the solution when you put in that change that was at five you reverse it you reverse the polarity from yang to yin and it becomes mountain this trigram over the wind trigram mountain over wind and it becomes 18 repairing damage this should be exciting because remember this is the solution this means that starting now Everything that we're seeing should be enacted in some way in your behaviors. So here's what 18 says. Something is rotting. It is time to repair the damage. Now, in your mind, be thinking at the collective level, but also internal. As above, so below. It's in the stars. It's in the I Ching. It's also in Washington, D.C. It's also around the country, but it's also within. So don't be pointing a finger without looking within. In the world of human affairs, self-indulgent and corruption grows like weeds in an untended garden. Yep, there's corruption everywhere. 
They must be faced squarely and rooted out through bold action. Yes! Isn't this what we wanted to hear? It must be happening this week, folks, even if you don't see any evidence of it. Eliminating corruption and the sloppiness that leads to it is an ennobling human enterprise as it clears the way for fresh new beginnings. Such repair ultimately leads to supreme success. Yay. I've got all these yays in here as my notes. This is time to be, now this is at the personal level, okay? This is time to be lean and efficient. The weeds must be rooted out before the whole garden is lost. Fighting decay, indifference, and corruption is not a simple matter. The steps must be evaluated carefully and planning should precede action. Resist the temptation to strike out prematurely. So we need patience. Gather strength around you and marshal your inner resources. Arresting decay requires a strong effort. When you do act, pay close attention to the process. Make your strike as precise, precise and clear as the path of the surgeon's knife. Yes, so I've got the questions. Is there more arrests here? Um, but caution, start with your individual weeds, right? So we see both here. We see, yeah, there's definitely corruption all around us that hopefully we can clean up, but don't forget about yourself first. Yeah, that's part of the collective. When you clean up yourself, you do your part in cleaning up the corruption around us. So let's get our... Our zodiac here, it's our calculator. Now, let me orient you. This is January 23rd, but it's it's the same the whole way whole way through because I'm picking this Mars trine Pluto as our main energetic influence. It gives us the power to just walk walk through, walk through this land, walk through this life passing through. And um, I picked the Pluto side because Mars is in detriment. And Pluto is uh, is a lot slower, and so this hexagram is stays right through here. We we basically project out where Pluto is, and it happens to be in sixty one hexagram sixty one of the Rave Mandala. That's human design, and we have a solution of the sidereal astrology of Sagittarius. So let's start with sixty one. What is that? It's the gate of inner truth. It's the awareness of universal underlying principles. Now, if you can see, it's hard to see, but um, we're on line three in that hexagram. So line three is interdependence. It is exceedingly difficult for truth to stand alone. The ability to establish relationships. Let me zoom in. The ability to establish relationships for the actualization of truths and through their nurturing and protective power to ensure the stable environment which they can continue to grow. If you make truths, if you find truths in today's environment without first cleaning everything up, you're going to find false truth. So we see the con connection and overlap with the rest of what we've already figured out today. The pressure to know enhanced through collaboration. So the key here is collaboration is now the, tr the the new truth. You're not going to be able to get to any absolute truth with just truth by itself. You're going to have to connect with others, collaborate, and in that collaboration will come the inner truth. The inner, okay. All right, here we go. Here's the final slide. We're going to give you the summary Here's the influence on the left side. This is the influence. There's a gal walking in the snow just because it's cold out, but we're just passing, passing through. If you can imagine a tourist, you know, you can tour these places, but touring maybe in uh, cities. But in life in general, that was the point of this pinnacle here, is a very existential influence, I think, is noticing the, there's, there's a lot to life. It can be very complex. But in reality, we put on a costume, we walk through it for a period of time, and then we go back to wherever back is. And that's sort of the, it's not futile, it's very purposeful, but you can get a higher sense of why we're here at an existential level. 
And here's the solution on the left side, best solution. We're looking for the overlap of the I Ching, the Rave, and the Sidereal. So the I Ching member said repairing damage, root out the weeds. You can do this. Hopefully they're doing that at the national and world global level. But you can do your part by getting lean and efficient and detoxing and facing corruption inside of yourself. Eliminate that. By the way, this is when I was talking about this is the energy of the full moon in Virgo is great time. Full moon is a time of sacrifice, of, of giving. And um, when you sweat, for example, you're in essence giving idly or, or uh, passively giving toxins. So you're giving your unwanted stuff to the moon. Moon takes, sun gives. And so you're giving that full moon and it's a Virgo. So it's very detailed. It's, it takes care of herself. Virgo does. And it's the zodiac that really has lists and routines and and good and good wants good healthy habits, so. So this is the energy. It's the same. I would start now, maybe detoxing yourself, but looking in mentally, looking in, on maybe guilt of the past, past, uh, past mistakes, um, forgiving self, accepting self, all these positive energies, taking care of yourself. And ridding out if you're um, noticing that you're doing white lies or or stealing stuff, it's time to end that now and repent or whatever your religious framework is so that you can get right. So that's that. Then we have the Rave Mandala, and it talks about inner truth. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that was constantly going for truth. I want to see the truth. And it's sort of an illusion. And this is a confirmation that Ray Mandala today, gate 61, line 3, says that you're going to actualize inner truth by way of community this week. And then down to the sidereal and Sagittarius, there's some downsides. There's downsides to all these, all these signs, but we're expansive, free, wise, doesn't like attachments, optimistic, philosophical, spiritual. So here's the overlap. We'll go to the very center where they all overlap. And here it is, overall triangulation. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So it's a cleaning house week for the collective. You can do your part by rooting out your own individual weeds, corruption, half-truths, resentments, wrongdoings, etc., Great time to detox all the way to the full moon, the Virgo full moon, um, w which will have many of the same energies. Don't look for absolute truth in the world. Truth will actualize through community and sharing. Good time for light, fun, social situations. What does that sound like? That's Sagittarius. Doesn't like to be tied down, but, but needs that positive, optimistic social interaction. So... Sagittarius doesn't like to be tied down, but um, but use the expansive, wise, optimistic, spiritual gifts from Sag to further clear your mind, body, spirit complex and find deeper truths as you pass through this week. <laughs> you like it? All right, everybody. Thanks. Uh, welcome back to the normal regimen of surf reporting. I hope you like these uh, better or or whatever comments are welcome thanks for your shares and likes i appreciate every one of you and um stay safe out there stay safe stay warm um make sure you drip your faucets i i just talked to a fireman um this morning as a, as a client and um he complained it was so busy today or last night with um pipes bursting and you know uh fire um the the fire hoses or whatever in the ceiling going off alarms going off apartments being evacuated because of a false alarm all to do with the bursting pipes or whatever so uh, stay safe stay warm and um have a great week passing through all right everybody take care